Hello, welcome back to Hand of Fate 2. Today, let's maybe just this. What was that about? What the fuck did I don't like it. I hate it. Okay, well, let's try it, the devil. We have all come from the downtrodden yes. and okay. feel that we have been unheard. Okay. Some of us are sent to great power regardless. Yes, okay. We can get plucked out of the cards. Yes, of course. Cut them to me. Those who travel with you are more than mere I kind of remember it, but not. They have their own goals not. and their own needs. Yet their stories have ended, or they would be here by your side, would they not? You arrive at the tavern one evening, anxious to sit beside a roaring fire of your companions. As you enter, however, you are surprised to find no familiar faces. After a meal and several hours of waiting alone, a priest rushes in. Your friend Ariadne lies stricken at the temple. You arrive at the temple to find Ariadne lying on a single bed, attended to by a church official. He explains that she has been stricken with dark magic that is slowly draining her Let life. us see what the smith can achieve. Somehow this malady resists our attempts at curing, the official says sadly. It, it's as if her very soul were poisoned. I'm sorry, her time is limited. The official leaves, shaking his head. It is not my place to say, they inquired in his purse, but perhaps there are other, other places you may seek help. In my work helping non refugees, I have heard tales of their high priestess, a mystic of sword who moves freely between the realm of men and the world beyond. If anyone could help your friend, it would be her. You know that the non priestess will not see you unless you possess enough blessings, but you have a few options. With the young cleric's help, you are re ready Ariadne for transport and leave the temple. Okay. Beautiful. Ellie, really? I don't mind any blessings. Given times are so dark, you are lucky to have allies willing to assist. You are walking past a black, plain looking carriage when the door suddenly opens and a huge pair of hands lift you inside. The carriage leaps forward as doors shut and you find yourself sprawled on a seat opposite a huge, powerfully built but unusually ugly man. Lord Apollyon requests your presence, the half ogre declares. The creature is silent the rest of the journey until you arrive at an impressive manor, manor house. You exit the carriage and are brought into a large hall for an audience before Apollyon. Ah, the great adventurer herself! Apollyon begins, smiling broadly and stepping forward to greet you. He bows slightly. Graciously, I have heard of your exploits. I too am but a servant of the Empire and its people. I'd like to offer my services if you ever have need of them. I don't presume to wield a sword or dodge a cloth roll as well as you, of course. 
but they do try to settle good people with supplies and such. Especially heroic figures such as yourself. Apollo invites you to stay and entertain him with stories of your adventures so far. He seems captivated by every word and several hours pass quickly. You lead an incredible life. I hope you return again soon with more enchanting tales. Apollyon takes an item from many adorning the walls, saying, Please accept this poultry gift. Perhaps it will help you rescue your friends. Terribly impractical when yeah. not on horseback. But you will make your own choices. Allow my coachman to take you back and please come visit again anytime. Oh god, I forgot about that. Which will... No, we're not getting anything good out of it, yeah. You must ponder the ties that begin to bind. You cross... The trap is slowly laid for you. You cross the northern border and prepare yourself for the long journey up Mount Freydis. You're surprised, however, to find a band of golden warriors waiting for you. The high priestess is expecting you, the leader of the band declares. Wait, he says, stopping to peer at you intently. Her shadowness, Queen of Frost, cannot abide the presence of the impure. You cannot enter the ritual house without sufficient sacred blessings. Really? Devils wait in the darkness. But which devil will you focus on? As you pass near a darkened alleyway one evening, a blackened and misshapen hand grasps you, pulling you close to the darkness. You stand at the precipice of ruin. The Dark Lord has taken an interest in your destiny and even now is engineering your downfall. The hunched creature pulls you with surprising strength further into the shadows. But I can help. There is magic that can help you beat him at his own game. We can craft it, you and I. Doing so may test your spirit, but that's better than eternal darkness, eh? He looks up at you, his yellow eyes glowing faintly. Do not fall to despair. We will meet again soon. I hope we won't. Really. Okay, Apollyon. You have to wonder why anyone would help you. Yeah. At least, my motives are clear. You want me dead? You return to the fine mansion of Lord Apollyon and are granted an immediate audience. How goes your quest to save Ariadne? Explain that you lack luck, the blessings required. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. I must confess that I have a weakness for game of chance. Apollyon leads you to a table in another room. A set of cards is already set out upon it. If you win, then I will provide the blessings you require. Lord Apulti nods as he adds. Yes, I have the means. You'll be surprised at what magical trinkets end up in my possession as part of my war. If I win, then you must pose with me for my next portrait. It will be tilted, titled Champions of the Empire. Perhaps I shall have a statue of us made as well. I'll even stack the deck in your favor. After all, I enjoy the excitement of the game and care little for actually winning. I'm sure you'll do well. Come on. God damn it. I actually did that. Well done. I think you've played this game before. He gestures to a darkly robed man who you faint to notice standing in a shadowed corner. The man comes to stand before you. His deep voice slowly intoning words in a foreign tongue. My associate is a follower of an ancient religion that you may not be familiar with, but rest assured that his devotion is second to none. As you sit through the lengthy ritual, you feel yourself drifting in and out of, con of consciousness, whether from the droning voice of the potent incense being burned, you cannot say. Okay. Oh, he gave me three. Four. You suddenly awake. 
Apollyon watching you smiled amusement from across the table. I expect you will to begin your journey to Hypers immediately. I sincerely hope you fr your friend makes a full recovery. Mm. No. Okay. I know what. Oh. There. This is no minor curse or spell from a magician. A beast of the underworld has tainted your friend's spirit, and without my help, she'll die. Esmeralfia poses to consider you, a gaze bor born into your soul. I think your fate will be to one day destroy the one who brings ruin to my people. Until then, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, yes? The Queen of Frost sends you down the as she prepares a ritual. Many hours later, you're summoned again. You find the queen standing over Ariadne, who, apart from being famished, appears fully recovered. Leave when you are ready, as Marantia declares, starting to leave. But heed my warning, hero. A shadow hangs over your soul. Stray but a little, and you will fail to the ruin of us all. Malaklipes told me he was going to the village of Ramstock. To investigate a rumor of magical artifact, I read explains as you leave the ritual house. I was to meet him there some days ago. I cannot understand how you come to be here now, given the challenges that have stood before you. As you journey towards Ramstock, you are disquieted by an increasing number of rumors concerning the village. It seems that every traveler coming from the direction has heard of terrible ritualistic murders being performed in the woods nearby. The rumors also suggest that the mage responsible has been captured. This guy's himself as a barn! I saw him with my own eyes, and he has the look of a killer. Don't worry, continues the man. Uh, <coughs> There will be justice served for those poor souls when the necromancer burns at the stake. Okay. Old spirits dwell in these waters, <coughs> and old power they offer. Still, I would not trust their terms if I were you. The Lady of the Lake calls you to her shores. The waves of Lake Nivean crash upon the rocks that surround it. You are camped on the side of the road one moonless night when a familiar pair of little eyes suddenly appears beyond the light of the campfire. You have glimpsed your doom, I take it. The curse is in the cards, you know. He limps from the shadows to sit next to you, although somehow the fire fails to eliminate his form at all. The spell that will be your salvation requires several unique ingredients, the cloaked figure explains. The first task will be to harvest the horn of a diabolic creature. I know of one that will be easy to overcome, he says, producing a silver whistle from his cloak. Strike quickly, though, or it may escape and you will spend countless light times regretting it. The whistle releases a sharp note at a fire and a fiery portal appears between the two of you. A short horned creature steps out as the portal closes again. Hey there be this gold the little ask looking up at him. The child sized creature seems oblivious of present for the moment. The mighty blow you to the head you knock the devil unconscious. Soon you have removed one of the beast's horn and handed it to Theophilius, who places it in a sack made from the same dark material as his cloak. That will do for the first element. I must immediately prepare it, Delphine says, starting to leave. He regards the limb form of the hellspawn. Do not be here when it wakes up, mortal. It will be angry and you do not. You have not the means to kill it. Ooh. Oh, show me this. Defend. Okay, that's not hard. The bolt. Give me the bolt. A frozen terror brought to your enemies. Can I sell something? Spike mace. Yeah, we can all throw it since we are going to use weapons. Well, weapons. Uh, 
sword. Some more thing. I'm not buying some more food. Uh, you say that another of your friends is in peril. How fascinating! You relate some details of the map situ situation. We live in dangerous times, indeed. Apollyon says, shaking his head. Do you have a plan to save Mal Clubs? What Apollyon asked. You explain that you have not yet visited the village of Ramsay to assess the situation. I expect you want to travel there immediately in order to save your friend. Would you like his transport there? Sure. My butler will show you to the stables. Take Pluto, she's the fastest. Both Apollyon stables turn out to house an extensive array of animals. You are helped into Blue Tail's back and the group soon rises into the air. So the noose begins to tighten and we question the very stakes. You arrive on the outskirts of the village of Ramstock, where Malcolm is being held captive. A wooden stake with brushwood piled around it stands in the village center. A few peasants stand around, talking eagerly about the impending doom of the so-called necromancer. You track down the town mayor who, despite, despite your pleas, refuses to consider sparing the mage's life. The creature's bound head to dough in blessed iron, and he'll stay that way until burning under a full moon. Good, decent folk from this town have been murdered, and I will see to that they receive justice. You plead my life's innocence. And who are you that wish to listen? The mayor exclaims. It will take more than the words of a nameless mercenary to free this creature of darkness. Napoleon! You cannot convince the village of Armstock to, to free him. Those dreadful peasants in the provinces can be savage folk. But I have a solution, if you will but play the cards once more. If you win, then I will use my considerable influence to spread word of your great deeds and service to the people. But we'll sing your praises across the empire. The rabble love nothing more than a hero, a real defender of the people. If it helps, I'll even have my personal herald accompany you. Your needs are more particular in this case, so I must insist that you up your aunt. If I win, you must stay and entertain my guests with tales of your adventures. What do you say? Does the prospect of another winning hand entice you? That's the spirit! I might have screwed myself with that one. I don't know. Okay. Another win! You are adept of both combat and the finer arts. I shall make plans with my associates tonight to support your cause. By the time you reach Ramstock, your name will be Legend. I don't think we we'll have any use of our equipment. At your approach, a woman then your garden spots you. She sends her child to fetch the mayor, and minutes later, a throng of other villagers approach, led by balding men. Look! The hero of the empire is in our village! You're here for the demon, of course. You must have heard that we captured it ourselves. The peasants all cheer. Don't worry, the mayor continues. We intend to burn it during the full moon. You ask the mayor to take you to Mount Labs, who you find sitting in a small cell bound in silver chains with set with glowing rooms. With some effort, you manage to convince the mayor to release him into your custody for proper disposal. I'm sure you know the best. You know best when it comes to creatures of the underworld, the mayor says. But we have the fire planned, and everybody is coming. Perhaps you could stay at just until the full moon. He asks hopefully as you lead Malcolm's away. At the edge of the village, the mayor reluctantly removes Malcolm's chains and stands well back as you leave. Thanks. Those scoundrels weren't kidding around. He goes on to relate how he was set upon as he entered the village, being accused, accused of so, for some local murders involving magic. It sure seemed that they knew I was coming, and where did they get those anti-magic chains from? You feel my vibes in on what's happened to Riadne. What about Estrella and Colbjorn? he asks as you begin your journey back towards the capital. So many enemies await you, and so many would stop you moving forward. The next day you stop to rest at a small inn, 
There are a few other patrons as you can see in a sparse meal before time to room. Moments later you hear a noise at the window. It suddenly opens, allowing a hooded stranger to slip inside. Relax your sword, um, mercenaries, the woman exclaims, warding you with an open hand. I seek only to deliver a message that your colleague Coldbjorn has been acquired by the guild. You see, she continues leaning against the windowsill. With recent setbacks to our key income potential, we've had to expand our enterprise with kidnapping and so on. And our evil tribe has an impressive bounty on your friend's head. It's all just business. For only 150 gold, you can buy your friend's life back. Bring the gold to the East Market Square and someone will contact you. Otherwise, well, I can't say how he'll be treated by those barbarians. The cloaked woman says as she ducks back out of the window, vanishing into the darkness once more. Hey, <laughs> greetings! The man gra gasps and bends over to gape at the artifact in the belt. Lovely, just lovely! I've been documenting every nook and cranny of this beautiful land, and my soul is shaking with delight at the thought of sharing it with you! May your vistas and be breathtaking and your tree climbing be no little. With an enthusiastic wave, the man shoulders his heavy rucksack and continues the journey whistling all the while. Okay, can I sell my equipment? How much? Not enough. Uh, 67. 83. 100, 124. Oh, what's up? Um, so we give up the ride for companion and return to the Sit resting next to a river one afternoon when Theophilus's dark form rises slowly from the water and limps towards you. He appears to be completely dry when he stops before you. Mortals often contemplate their own doomed existence in the light of the setting sun, but yours is more doomed than most, which makes them progress on your spell. Why are you helping me? <laughs> I have I have offered you to offer to help you with no mention of reward for myself. Of course you are suspicious of my intent. He stares to the distance for a moment before saying I have my own reasons for seeing a poor helpless soul escape the clutches of the Lord of Evil. The next step is more normally as difficult to achieve as obtaining a devil horn, but luck is with us again. The agent of your downfall has provided us with exactly what we need. To possess so many blessings is rare for a mortal. I shall add, add their power to the mix. Theophilus opens a small vial towards you and with a sickening tug you feel some part of you torn away. Mm. Yeah, this one. More? Yes, one. More? Yeah, this is done. This will do nicely, Theophilus says with satisfaction as he seals the urn. Never lose hope, mortal, he calls as he returns to the river. The Dark Moon may still lose his prize yet. Everything is a wager, but our difference is that we understand the game must have rules and definitions if it is to bind. You enter a tavern one evening just as a gang of soldiers rise angrily from a table, leaving just a well dressed civilian seated. You cheating son of a harpy! Gentlemen, please, I cannot help if a lady like has taken to me this fine evening. Nobody's that lucky, the soldier exclaims, drawing his sword. The other soldiers advance around the table. The unarmed man suddenly leaps from his chair and daggers behind you, saying, Mercenary, I implore you, I am humble and honest merchant in need of aid. Save me from this band of treacherous fiends whom I have offended primarily by playing fairly a number of games of chance, and I'll pay you with gold. Hey, that's our gold, Hansel. Okay, but let me check something. For this I need to... Uh, no. uh, oh, complete strength with this. Okay. Yeah, let's defend him. We warned you, stranger. Hansel runs and hides behind the bench, his money bags clinking loudly as the battle begins. We need gold. There is a chance for us to get to 150 gold. 
if he pays enough. Steel and Flesh both subscribe to the same rules. If you hit them hard enough, they do what you want. When activated, Ariana performs powerful attacks that cause high armor damage. They close the charge. Time to wreck this joint! Oh, and we are against the Empire. That's just perfect. Having dealt with the threat of the vengeful soldiers, he turned to find Lucky Hansel lying still behind the bench, and not know what crouch over by him. A man who cheat has no honor, the Norman says matter of factly. Shading his knife and have taken Merchant's money back. He will not cheat me again. The Norman moves to the extent of golden hand. Stop him! Oh. <laughs> yes. That will set you in good stead from here. With the normal way to down cult, you manage to drag him to the ground. An Empire captain arrives with a dozen men and separates you both, as well as taking the bag of gold. Looks like Hansel's swindling days are over, but at least we've caught his two accomplices, fighting over the spoils. One of the soldiers interrupts the captain, saying, Wait, don't you know who this is? He tells some of some of the adventurers. My apologies. I didn't realize you were traveling in this parts. Good work on capturing the Northern. Too bad we didn't get Hansel alive. But no, give me the gold. <laughs> A balance of resources is key. No one wants yeah, to perish but... wealthy but starving. We don't have enough. Do we? Not this one. Then this one. We don't have enough. Okay, so I'll buy some food. Because we don't have enough anyway. No, no, no. We have to go back. There you come. We return to the fine mansion of both Napoleon and our grand and new audience. You see that another defense is in peril? How fascinating! He relates some details as to cold prince situation. We live in dangerous times, indeed, Apollon says, shaking his head. I see you still bear the marks of battle yourself. Apollon remarks, sending his butler to a hill in the forehead. How could you request to save cold beyond? I don't have really enough money. I'd like to help, if I may. Would you mind terribly indulging me in another little game? If you win, then I'll give you the required gold to pay the ransom for your friend. No need to repay it, no strings attached. If I win then, shall we say that you owe me Dave's service? I have business interests in the northern hills that require some important deliveries. As you know, the land is still rife with northern warriors, despite the Emperor's claims. How about it, adventurer? Coldmore's life could be saved at the turn of a card. Excellent! Let's begin. Oh, I hate you. Oh, I hate you. Damn it! Luck is not with you today, it seems. Let's play again. If I win this round, then you must act as my personal bodyguard at the next Winter Solstice Festival. God damn it! Ah, perhaps you were toying with me for that first game. With a gesture from a pulley, an all small humanoid creature brings over just to go. I hope with that gold you get your friend back in one piece. Do you visit do visit again sometime and let me know how it went. Your allies of course help in times of trouble, but when the tables are turned. Ah. 
You enter into a wide courtyard filled with stalls and smiling citizens. Within moments, you are roughly drawn into a shady corner protected from prying eyes by a variety of hanging carpets. Hello again! The cookroom begins brightly, her two beefy companions silently taking position to either side of you. How did we go? Are we saving our lives today? You hand over a sack of coins, which is promptly seized by one of the large men. Hope that wasn't too much trouble to get your hands on. Don't commence as the coins are counted. Eventually, the man nods to the woman and the two men leave, taking the gold. No hard feelings, eh? It's just business. The woman smiles, drawing up her cloak. Suddenly, she dashes away, vanishing behind a pile of rolled up carpets. Pray that you might have just been hoodwinked. You wander back through the crowds in time to see Corbin being thrown from a moving wagon. You paid them, he says, standing and brushing his mouth. I owe you my life. Colpin relates his tale to capture, of capture and confinement by the guild. His child wasn't with me then, when I was taken. I don't know what her fate has befallen her. One has to wonder why a sudden wave of carelessness has overtaken your allies. Harald enters the marketplace and announces that Captain Estrella Fiora, a traitor to the Emperor, has been captured. She has been sentenced to death by the Emperor himself, the Emperor continues, but her fate be an example to all who would consider defying his will. It won't work, interrupts the commander. The more executions he hands out, the more the free people will rebel. The Emperor is cracking down on the lawless, lawlessness running rampant in the city. And you sound like a rebel yourself. Discreet inquiries leads you to learn that Estrella is being held in a remote Empire stronghold, but nobody claims knowledge of where it is. How will we ever rescue Estrella if we can f even find her? Ayan asks in anguish. Of course, it's him. <laughs> find the weapon merchant's carriage parked behind a city tavern. Sorry, I had to dash last time. I've come by surplus of rails from the Battle of Crimson Day. I can take one for being so accommodating last time. It's on the house. I don't need any of this. Really? I'm with your new equipment a bit Esmeralda. Good evening and continue your journey. Thank you. So, let's try. I'm trying to find something. Yeah, that's all. Get my food. Leave. One day, you come across a man wrapped in a torn grey cloak, sitting on a rock by the path through a sparse wood. Greetings, mortals. Theophilus utters as you stop. The next element of your magical salvation is approaching. It begins without putting to stand. You will meet a traveler on the outskirts of the forest. Trade with him to obtain the feather of an angel. Do not reveal what use you would have for it. I wish you luck. Not long later, you meet a dwarf, bristling with bags, sacks, and loaded meat mugs. Let's trade, he suggests. I'm so sure we can come to a mutually beneficial transaction. As it happens, I do have an angel feather that I traded for my cobalt mystic in the western provinces. Do you need to throw anything in particular? Into the negotiation. I don't know. E yeah, I'm fine with that. You managed to convince the world that the feather is probably a fake, where food for more than a few beads and the torn half of a map you find in your pack. The dwarf is barely out of sight and Theophilus is suddenly beside you saying, That dwarf has never had such a valuable prize in his possession and perhaps never will again. But now it is time for the spell to be completed. Theophilus takes the feather and adds it to the spell concussion. The vial gives a silent bright flash and returns to normal. At last! After all these years, I will be free! He launched forward, reaching for the vial, but Theophilus is already opening it.
No! Theophilus cries as we wrestle the vial from his grasp. Please, mortal, do not understand. This is my only chance for freedom. Explain. I was like you once, full of purpose and an inflated sense of destiny. I dared to stake my soul on a card game. I have been enslaved since before the Empire formed, before even the Dragon Slayers waged a war. I have seen and done things that would drive you to madness. Without that file, I shall suffer countless lifetimes more. Drink it. A huge success card is added to every chance gambit. What secrets could it reveal? No! You have condemned me to eternal torment. Well, luckily, we can exorcise you. Desperate for salvation, your ally has turned against you. First, move a knife and avoid the bull attack. Okay, it hit me. I was so sure it is. Oh god damn it. Where is he? There's no release for me, and soon it won't be for you either. You return to the fine mansion of Lord Apollyon and are granted an immediate audience. You say that another of your friends is in peril. How fascinating! You write some details as to astral situation. We live in dangerous times indeed. How goes your Quest to save Estrella, ask for help. It is no trivial thing you wish to gamble for this day. Even I can sway the Emperor's decision, my friend. And helping you intervene would be tantamount to treason. Perhaps if you win, then I could give you the means to rescue your friend. But if I were to make such a gamble, then you must risk something equally significant. If I win, you must serve me until I release you. Or until I die, of course. Well, champion, are you willing to gamble one life for another? Apollon smiles weakly and does the cards. Yep. I'm gonna do it! Oh my god! Apollon sat silently for a moment, glaring at the cards before turning you on you in anger. You cheated! How did you do it? Tell me what magic you possess! The room falls into shadow as Apollyon throws the table side with a flick of his wrist and advances on you. Flames erupt from the heart and Apollyon seizes you, saying, Here I must grant your prize, mortal, but no other, I will not forget this! The world fades to darkness. Can you hope to resolve things now? You awaken later just out of sight of an empire fort with various items and portions portion scattered around you. Gather what you can, as carrion birds suddenly lose interest in you and fly away. A simple gift for those who would help their allies along the way. Brutal, simple and effective, as Callus once was. Well armed and invigorated the approach the fort, a call to arms rises from the walls as twin voices slowly advance. Imperial soldiers block the path ahead. Okay, I really hope that I could get Ariadne with me. Loyal to the Emperor and unforgiving battle. Hen Henricus the Warden. 
I'm oh okay. Okay. Wait. What? Okay, I we need to get rid of those. Okay, now it works. With birds already feasting on the radar part of the fort garrison, you, is, you gain easy access to the fort and locate Estrella in her cell. Took your time, she said with a crude smile. You briefly relate the difficulties that have bested your older companions as you exit the now deserted fort. I overheard the word and say that someone gave them information, told them right where I was going to be the day they ambushed me. Estrella says, pausing to really with a foreign soldier of his weapon. It sounds like someone with a lot of clout went to a lot of trouble organizing all this. You're making some powerful enemies. The impossible seems Why? out of your grasp. At least for now. Why? There is much left to do, but we are beginning to. Wait, why? What can be done to get the golden token? Hey! Hey! Oh well. Actually, no, let's see. Does it say? No. Okay. Okay, keep your secrets. For now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!